G'day, Gary from Simple Audio Tips. Did you know that you can't test the true resistance or impedance of a 70 volt speaker system with a standard multimeter like this one? Now stick around and I'll prove it with a simple test and show you the tool you need. Without getting too complicated and increasing the yawn factor to about 10, I'm going to go over some basic differences between these two meters. A standard multimeter checks the resistance in a circuit by applying a DC or direct current and displaying the result on the meter here. An impedance meter, on the other hand, tests the circuit with the same conditions as an audio signal, and that's by applying an alternating current. With a simple resistive circuit, like just a, a resistor in line, the results between these two meters are going to be exactly the same. But when you introduce speaker coils and transformers into, this, into the works, weird things start to happen with the resistance in the circuit, especially when you're applying an alternating current. Temporary magnetic fields produced in the coils resists current flow and in turn produces resistance. Now, I don't want to bore you with any more detail than that, but put simply, a standard multimeter like this one is unable to give you a true load reading because it doesn't apply the same signal to the circuit as the impedance meter. Now the audio amplifier gives alternating current, the impedance meter does the same. Now let's look at this in practice. We've got an audio impedance meter and we've got a standard multimeter. And I'm going to connect the uh, audio impedance meter to a standard resistive circuit and that's just a little resistor that uh, is labelled at 470 ohms. So I'm going to connect that up to the leads and I'm going to turn the meter on and it's set to the 100 scale and it reads just below 5, we 5 by 100, so that's just below 500 ohms. Now let's have a look at the normal multimeter and we'll connect that up. Connecting that up is just under 500 ohms as well, or 0.469k. So as far as these two meters are concerned, applying it to a standard resistive circuit, they see the same amount of resistance. Now what happens when you test a speaker system that's got transformers and voice coils and things like that in line. Well, let's have a look at that. Firstly what I'm going to do is connect the impedance meter to the feed line and remember this works by on a scale and it's a multiplication scale so whatever reading we have here is multiplied by 100. You'll hear a tone because that's the alternating current going through the system and the reading is just under 450 ohms. Now let's look and see what the multimeter gives. Connecting the multimeter to it, 0.028k, which is 28, 28 ohms. A big difference between the two. We've got 28 ohms here, and when we test with the audio impedance meter, We've got 450 ohms, a big difference between the two. Now look, does it really matter that the two readings are different? Well, amplifier manufacturers state the minimum impedance that can be connected before the amplifier overloads. If you overload the amplifier, you can damage it or even burn it out. Now let's imagine an installation where you've got 20 or 30 speakers in a large area or even down a corridor or something like that. Without an impedance meter you can only make a calculation by adding each of the speaker outputs together that's written on the labels. But this doesn't take into consideration any wall attenuators in separate rooms, maybe line faults caused by damaged cables or incorrectly marked speaker outputs. There are so many different variables to take into consideration. An impedance meter tests the total load at the point where it's connected to the amplifier and checks that it's between the amplifier's tolerances. In the next video, I'm going to take a closer look at two popular audio impedance meters on the market in Australia, the Australian Monitor and also the Altronics Redback unit, which is a little more automatic. 
If you want a reminder when we upload our next video, make sure that you subscribe to our channel. And if you use social media, connect with us on Instagram or even Twitter. At Simple Audio Tips, we're dedicated to make sound gear easier to understand with equipment reviews and tutorials. So stick around. If you've got a great question or tip of your own, share it with us by typing it in the comments section below. Until our next video, catch you later. Thank you.